Are you glad to turn to your neighbor and tell them good to see you this morning? Good to see each and every one of you in the house of the Lord. Amen. God is indeed a good God. Help me sing this song. I need thee, oh, I need thee. Every hour I need thee. Oh, bless me now, my Savior. I come to thee. Let's sing that again. I need thee. I need you, oh, I need you. Every hour. One more time, I need thee. I need thee. Oh, I need thee. Come on with lifted hands. Every hour I need Oh, bless me now. Oh, bless me now. I say. be a shout of praise. Let there be a high note of praise. Let there be a cacophony of praise. He's worthy of praise. He's worthy of honor. He's worthy of glory. We magnify. We glorify. We honor his name. We reverence his name. We magnify and glorify the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Precious Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, we welcome you. We welcome you, Holy Spirit. Angelic hosts, we welcome you this morning. Fill this auditorium. Fill this sanctuary, Lord, with your presence. Let the weight of your glory fall fresh upon us today. Bring about transformation and change. Lord, I pray as the word goes forth, I pray that you will amplify your word through my voice, mighty God. Let your word go forth with power, with might, with accuracy this morning. Mighty God, I pray that there will be healing signs and wonders to confirm your word. And Lord, we are careful to give you the praise, the honor, and the glory. In the wonderful name of Jesus Christ, could someone call on that name this morning? Jesus. He is worthy. Hallelujah. You may have your seat, saints. We give God all the praise. We had so much rain up in the north. Yes. Amen. Thank God that we all are here this morning. Good to see every one of you here this morning. And what Sunday is th today? supernatural Sunday and that is our emphasis this morning because we serve a supernatural God amen I don't want to ever want you to ever forget that the God that we serve is a supernatural God and today there are many people who are sick continue to be sick because we the church have failed in our mandate to get them healed and so many have lost confidence in the church ability, in the church's ability to get people healed. And that's why you have the rise in the occult. People going to obia men, obia women, and people to wash them down and rub them down and give them bush bath and all kind of thing. It's because we, the church, not doing our job. Amen? Amen. And this is a stark contrast to when Jesus walked the earth. Because 
people had so much confidence in the ability of Jesus Amen. that he just couldn't get to all of them to administer healing. So guess what Jesus did? He healed people from a distance. Amen. Are you aware of that? Amen. Jesus healed people from a distance. He couldn't get to everybody. And so he healed people from a distance. Amen. And I came here this morning to let you know that Jesus could heal you, your family, no matter where they are located, whether they are near, whether they are far, or whether they are in between. It doesn't make a difference. Because distance does not limit the healing power of God. And so, I want you to know that there is absolutely no limitation. There is no restriction to God's healing power. However, the one thing that will stop you from receiving healing, whether you are near or far, is the fact that you believe that there is a restriction. Let me say that again. The one thing that will stop you from receiving, notice what I'm saying, eh? God's power to heal is available. God's power is on. The, 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 the button is switched on. It's not off. And one of the greatest revelations I've come into understanding is that God wants to get people healed more than they want to be healed. That's why he sent Jesus. By his stripes, you what? Heal. You are healed or you were healed? You were. Past tense. He's already done it. He's already done it. God has already done it. Healing is switched on. So healing is available. And that's why I said the one thing that will stop you from receiving is not that God, God has to heal you. You don't have to pray for God to heal you. you know. He's already healed you. You just have to receive it. But the one thing that will stop you from receiving healing is the fact that you believe that there is some kind of restriction, there is some kind of blockage, that there is something. You know, some people believe, well, I ain't sure if God wants to heal me. I ain't sure. God has, God has already healed you. Healing is yours. Amen. It's yours. Amen. He has made the deposit in the spiritual bank. It's available. All you have to do is withdraw. Put a demand on it. You see, the only thing that could stop you from receiving healing is your unbelief. Unbelief. This was the one reason that Jesus identified why people did not receive their healing. Unbelief. And according to Jesus, the people who unbelief stopped the flow of healing wasn't the one being prayed for. It was the people doing the praying. <laughs> you know, many times ministers, when they pray, people don't get healed. They say, well, you didn't have enough faith. No, you, the minister, have to have faith for them. That's what Jesus was saying. Check it out in Mark 9, Matthew 17. Jesus rebuked the disciples when the deaf mute did not get healed. He didn't rebuke the deaf mute. He didn't rebuke the father. He rebuked the disciples. He said you guys had too much unbelief. So Jesus hold the, the people praying responsible for the healing and not the people being prayed for. Check it in the Bible. But that's not what ministers do today, right? They tell you, well, you know, if you ain't get healed, it's because you didn't have faith. That is not what Jesus say. Jesus is saying, you the minister need to have faith for them. You the minister. We need to have faith for them. And so it's time for us to stop making excuses. We have to go back to the ministry of Jesus. We have to go and sit at the feet of Jesus and learn from Jesus. You see, it's possible to not just heal people who are in your presence, but it's possible for people to get healed from a distance. That's what we're going to see in our text today. 
In fact, long before Jesus arrived on the scene, God was healing people from a distance. You don't believe me? Turn in your Bibles this morning. We are in the book of Psalms. We're reading one verse. Psalm 107 verse 20. When you have found it, give me a big amen. Psalm 107 verse 20. It says, He, who is he here? God sent his word. And what did he do? He did what? He healed them. And what else did he do? He delivered them from their destructions. May the Lord bless the reading of his word. Today we are speaking on the subject, healing from a distance. Healing from a distance. And just in case you didn't know, the God we serve is a great God. Amen. He's a powerful God. Amen. He can do exceedingly, Amen. abundantly, above all that you can ask or imagine. It is time that we take God from out of the box that we have put him in. Some of us, we put God in a box. And we feel that God can't do this. And God can't do that. God could do anything. Yeah. Take him out of the box. Yeah. It's time to enlarge your thinking. Take the limits off of God. And what you think he can do. Because he can do all things. Including healing from a distance. And there are at least three recorded incidents in the Bible, in the ministry of Jesus, where he healed people from a distance. At least three recorded incidents. That is what was recorded. Remember the Apostle John says, if we were to write down all the things that Jesus did, we would run out of pages to write. So many things he did. But there were three recorded instances in the earthly ministry of Jesus where people were healed from a distance. There was the incident of the centurion serv servant in Matthew 8, 5 to 13. There was also the incident of the nobleman's son in John chapter 4, verse 46 to 53. And finally, there was the incident involving the daughter of the Syrophoenician woman. In Matthew 15, 21 to 28, take a note of those scriptures. There are some common truths in these three incidents that we need to consider. And in the interest of time, we're not going to read all three incidents. We're just going to read one of them. We're going to look at the one involving the centurion servant in Matthew 8. Matthew 8, reading from verse 5. It says, now when Jesus had entered Capernaum, a centurion came to him, pleading with him, saying, Lord, my servant is lying home, paralyzed, dreadfully tormented. Notice what he said. My servant is lying home. He came to Capernaum to meet Jesus, and he said, I have a servant. He's so sick, he's on a bed home. You all saw that, right? Dreadfully tormented, he said. And Jesus said to him, I will come and heal him. Listen to what the centurion said. The centurion answered and said, Lord, I am not worthy that you should come under my roof. But only speak a word. You notice what, he, you notice what the centurion said? Speak a word. And my servant will be healed. Now this man was not a believer. He was a Roman um, military official, a high-ranking official. He was not a believer, but he heard about Jesus. And he came. And listen to what he said. Just speak the word. You don't have to come under my roof. Listen to what he says. For I also am a man under authority, having soldiers under me. He had 100 soldiers. That's why he was called a centurion. He was in charge of 100 soldiers. He says, I am a man under authority. And I say to this one, go, and he goes. And to another, come, and he comes. And to my servant, do this, and he does it. In other words, what he was saying to Jesus is, 
I recognize that you also are a man under authority. And when you speak, demons have to fly out of here. Sickness have to go. Because you have authority over demons and disease. That's what he was saying to Jesus. Listen to what the Bible says. It says, when Jesus heard it, he marveled. There are few things that cause Jesus to marvel. It's always a wrong faith. He marveled when people had great faith. And he marveled when they had no faith. But he marveled. In other words, he was amazed. He said to those who followed, Assuredly, I say to you, I have not found such great faith, not even in Israel. Then Jesus said to the centurion, Notice the instruction. Go your way, and as you have believed, so let it be done for you. And what does the Bible say? And his servant was healed that same day. Hour. You're going to come back to that. So how was the servant healed? He was healed by the word, but how? He was healed from a distance, right? The servant was not in Jesus' presence. The servant was miles away in a house, laid up in a bed. And all Jesus did was he spoke the word. And he was healed. Three truths I want to highlight this morning from these instances that we saw healing from a distance. Firstly, we see in each of these accounts that someone came to Jesus seeking healing or deliverance on behalf of a loved one who was some distance away. We notice that in the text, the centurion came on behalf of his servant who was laid up in a bed miles away. And this lets us know that although the loved one was a distance away, they, that person who came on their behalf, believed that Jesus could have done something about it. Otherwise, they would not have come to Jesus. The nobleman, he came. The Syrophoenician woman, she came. Believing that Jesus could do something about the situation. Amen. Although the person that they were coming on behalf of was miles away. I wonder this morning, what do you believe? Do you believe that this same Jesus who did that 2,000 years ago could do that for you today? Amen. For your family today? Yeah. The Bible tells us that he is the same when? Yes. Yesterday, today, and forever. He does not change. And so the question is, do you believe that Jesus could heal, deliver, set free your loved one, although they are miles away? Amen. Amen. But you know what the Bible says, right? Faith without works is dead. If we say we believe, we have to demonstrate that. We have to follow up that belief with action. The people in these accounts, some of them had to overcome great obstacles to demonstrate their faith. They had to make personal sacrifices to demonstrate their belief because it was not very easy to see Jesus in those days. Jesus had to you know, the Bible says he could no longer come into the city areas because the crowds were following him. So many times coming to Jesus, remember the woman with the, with the issue of blood? She had to fight her way through, fight her way through just to get to touch the hem of his garment because of the mass of humanity surrounding Jesus. So they had to make some personal sacrifices the nobleman had to travel a great distance. He, and when he got to Jesus, he was rebuked. Jesus said, but all your fellows, unless all they see some kind of miracle, all they wouldn't believe it. Eh? <laughs> Check the account. 
the Syrophoenician woman. You know what Jesus said to her? He said, yes, healing is available. But healing is for the children, not for the dogs. She said, yes, Lord, but even the dogs is eat the crumbs. So what am I saying? I'm saying sometimes you will have to overcome. I mean, this woman had to overcome ridicule and shame. And, you know, she, she, she instead of retaliating, she persisted. The nobleman, instead of retaliating and, you know, saying, but you don't know who I am. Because the nobleman was a high-ranking official. But he was rebuked. And sometimes you will have to overcome and make personal sacrifices in order to demonstrate your faith. And because they demonstrated their faith, they made sacrifices. They went to Jesus. They endured shame. They endured rebuke. They received. And so it's important for us to see here that the fate of the sick person was not a factor in their healing. You all see that? The fate of the servant of the centurion who was laid up in a bed was not a factor in receiving healing. You all saw that? In fact, there was no conversation about the servant apart from the fact that the centurion said, I have a sick servant. Jesus didn't call him and text message him and say, you have faith? <laughs> you all see that? The nobleman's son who was home to the point of death, Jesus didn't send a fax and to find out if you have faith. The Syrophoenician woman's daughter who was demon-possessed. Her faith was not a factor in her healing. The reason why these people were healed is because someone demonstrated faith on their behalf by going to Jesus. The centurion exercised faith on behalf of the servant by going to Jesus. What am I saying? I'm saying you can exercise faith on behalf of your loved one. Yeah. Your loved one may be somebody who is not even saved. They may be somebody who is sick in a hospital somewhere. They may be in another country somewhere. But you know that they need healing. You know they need deliverance. They, you know they need a touch. Come on, mighty God, I'm saying it's possible for you to come to Jesus on their behalf. It's possible for you to exercise faith on their behalf. Amen. Now, Jesus, throughout his ministry, encouraged people to have faith. But you know what? He never depended on their faith. Because he had enough faith for them. He had enough faith for them. You say, you say where, where, where did that happen? I could give you several examples. Remember the, the, the widow at Nain? Jesus and his entourage was walking out. They were walking into the city. Carrying the casket of the dead boy. And when they saw Jesus, they stopped. All Jesus did was touch the casket. And say, young man, rise up. Did he have faith? He couldn't have faith. He did. <laughs> Jairus' daughter, did she have faith? No, she was dead. So who had faith? Jesus. Lazarus. Dead for four days. Did he have faith? No. What is the point I'm making here? You can exercise faith on behalf of someone. Jesus had enough faith for them. And that's why they were healed. So I encourage you, have faith not just for your own healing and breakthroughs, but exercise faith on behalf of your loved ones, those who are unsaved, those who are sick and infirm, those who are under the influence of the demonic. 
You can exercise faith on their behalf. You may have not seen it like this. But the point is, of these three incidents, the three people who were beneficiaries of healing from a distance, none of their faith was a factor in their healing. And yet, each of them were healed. Why? Because Jesus exercised faith, and the people who came on their behalf exercised faith. Amen. And they, they received. And the same thing could happen for you. So the question is, what are you going to believe this morning? Are you going to believe this? I mean, we've seen it in the Word. We've seen it directly in the Scriptures. The question for you this morning, do you believe that Jesus could do the impossible? Do you believe that what he did then, he could do now? Do you believe that this morning? That is the question before us. And you know, sometimes we may have been prayed for in the past. We didn't see the result that we were expecting. And we become jilted. We become despondent. And we blame God sometimes. We say, God, well, like, you don't heal again. You don't heal again. But people are getting healed. There are people all over the world getting healed. So why can't be you? Why can't be your family? Why can't be your relative? If people all over the world are getting healed, all over the place, the blind is being healed, you may not be hearing about it, but the blind is being healed, the deaf is being healed, the lame is walking, cancer is being um, driven out of people's bodies, demons are being driven out of people's bodies, people are being healed and delivered all around the world. Because God has not changed. He's the same. We exercise faith in God. Faith in God. Because faith in God can move mountains. Jesus says, you, can, you shall say unto this mountain, be thou removed and be cast into the sea. Amen. And it shall be done. Amen. That's the power that he has made available to us. But there is a second truth that I want us to see. And it's this. All it took in each of these three incidents to get people healed was one word from God. Amen. One word. We read in our text, it says that he, what? He sent his word. Do you know that the word could be sent? Yes. You see, just like how you could send a text message, send an email, send a voice note, the word of God could be sent. And people would be healed and delivered. Jesus didn't have to be physically present to heal. All he had to do was speak the word. This is what the centurion said. He says, I recognize that you are man under authority. Your words have power. All you have to do is speak and things will happen. Do you know that you have the same authority to speak? The Bible says death and Life is where? In the power of the tongue. Amen. You can speak. Jesus says, you shall say unto the mountain. You can speak to a mountain. Whatever that mountain represents, whatever obstacle there is in your life, you can speak to it. And tell it what to do. And it will obey. This is what we saw in Psalm 107. It says he sent his word and healed them from their disease. Delivered them from their destruction. What healed them? What did the healing? It was the word. There is power in the word. Sister Carol was talking about that scripture in Hebrews 4.12. The word of God, it is quick. It is sharp. Sharper than any two-edged sword. It can pierce and divide. It is a discern of the thoughts and the intents. The word could cut through disease and sickness and demons. There is power in the word. Jesus says, the word that I speak, it is spirit and life. The word can bring forth life. It is health to your body, health to your bones. 
There's power in the word. The problem is we're not speaking the word enough. We're not speaking the word enough. We speak in, we speak in debt. Many times we, we are describing things and describing the negatives. Nowhere in the scripture we were called to be commentators. God didn't call us to commentate on the problems that, is, that are going on. No, he says you change it. That's what he said to um, Ezekiel. He placed him in the valley of the dry bones. He says, son of man, can these bones live? He threw it back at God. He said, well, God, you know. <laughs> God says, no, no, no. You speak to these bones and tell the bones what to do. Speak life into the bones. You need to start speaking life. You need to start speaking to your problems. You need to start speaking to sickness. You need to rise up with authority and begin to speak and say what God says. Say what God says. You ain't see the result? Keep speaking. You ain't see it yet? Keep speaking. Keep speaking until you see the result. This is what Elijah, one of the greatest prophets, Remember when he sent the fella, he said, go and see if, if it's ready to rain. The man had to go seven times. The first six times he went, nothing, nothing in the sky. Elijah sent him back the seventh time. When he came back, he says, I'm now beginning to see a cloud the size of a man's hand. Look how small that is, eh? The size of a man's hand. That was all Elijah needed. He said, go and tell Ahab to prepare for an abundance of rain. Yeah. And within a few minutes, see a man, that cloud that was the size of a man's hand, grew to a massive cumulonimbus cloud. See, I remember my geography. <laughs> a massive cumulonimbus cloud, that's the rain cloud. And it rained. You never see so much rain. That is because you had one man who was prepared to speak the word of God. And keep speaking the word of God until he saw a change in the situation. Because there is power in the word. As sons of God, our tongue is our, one of our greatest weapons against the enemy. Your tongue. That's why the devil will try to silence you. He try to shut you up. He try to stifle you. He will throw things at you. But don't fall for that. Don't take that cat and basket. Don't take that. He trying to shut you up. He trying to get you off the word of God. He trying to dazzle you with all these other things. They are disturbances. Because the enemy knows that if you, if he could shut you up, then he win. Anytime the enemy could shut you up, and sometimes he sends disturbance in your life, pressure here, pressure there, to get you to shut up. That's all he wants to do. He wants you to shut up. So he gets you talking about, you see what he's doing? You see what she's doing? And he laughing at you. Look at you. Instead, you should be talking about the word of God. You're talking about Tom, Dick, Harry, yeah. and this, and that, and the other. And he's laughing at you. Because he has, he, has silent, he has effectively silenced you. He's taken you out of the battle. That's why the Bible says, do not be ignorant of the devices of the enemy. Because all he's trying to do is to shut you up. He don't, want, he don't want you to be speaking the word of God. You see, when you begin to speak the word of God, that's like arrows being released in the kingdom of darkness. That's like bombs being released. So what do you think he's going to do? He is going to do everything possible to silence you. So the time when you're supposed to be speaking the loudest is when the enemy giving you pressure. That is when you ought to be speaking. You can't, you, can't, you can't backtrack 
and say, yeah, devil, I go, I go shut up now. No. That is the time when you have to amplify your voice. Take the fight to the enemy. Begin to speak. Begin to declare. Because there's power in the word. Amen. That's what Jesus did. He spoke. And people were healed from a distance. Because Jesus understood the authority that he, he had available to him. Do you understand the authority you have available to you? Do you understand that there is power in your tongue? Resurrection power? Life-giving power? Healing power? Delivering power? All of that is in your tongue! So we have to recognize that all it takes to get someone healed, someone delivered, whether they are near or far, is one word from God. Amen. That's how powerful the word is. It says he sent his word. You can send your word and people will be healed, delivered, set free. You can send your word. Send your word. This is what Jesus did. The third and final truth I want us to see is that in each case, after the word was spoken, healing came within the hour. In other words, they did not receive an instantaneous healing. It was a progressive healing within the hour. So what I, what I want us to understand is that healing may not always be an instantaneous thing. Sometimes it comes progressively. That's what we read in the account with the centurion. Let me go back to that account. In Matthew 8... Listen to what Jesus says. It says, I believe in verse 13, then Jesus said to the centurion, go your way, and as you have believed, so let it be done for you. So the word was spoken. And listen to what it says. And his servant was healed that same hour. It wasn't instant. It was within the hour. Now, it's very important that we understand this point because sometimes, you know, people pray and you don't see anything happen immediately and, you know, you think, like this thing at work, boy. Like this thing at work. Not knowing that sometimes the healing is progressive. So you have to stay in faith. Don't undermine your faith and then say, after you pray, like this thing at work. That's the self-fulfilling prophecy. What you say is what you get. You can't, you can't in one breath pray for something and then in the next breath undermine yourself, shoot yourself in the foot. No. You have to stay in faith. God is healing. God is delivering. It's going to happen. That's what you have to say. Stay in faith. Because sometimes the healing may not be instant. It could be progressive. Even in the ministry of Jesus. The healing was progressive. And so I want us to understand it doesn't take away from the fact that God healed you. Because you know we, we come to expect that if the healing didn't happen instantaneously, it's not of God. Or it didn't happen or it didn't work. No, sometimes it could be progressive. So you need to be open to that. It's not a lesser healing if it happened within the hour. And so as I conclude this morning, I want you to know that God can heal you, your family, your friends, your loved ones, whether you are near or far. There is no restriction to God's healing power. It says he sent his word He's made healing available to us. God has already provided for our healing. He's already paid for healing. Jesus Christ paid for healing. 
those stripes that those 39 lashes that he took on his back with the cattle nine that pull out the flesh he was battered and bruised that is when he paid for your healing it's paid for so you have to see yourself already healed it's a shift in our mindset it's not that you're trying to get god to heal you no you are you are basically taking what god has already provided that's the mindset see yourself already healed god has already provided it i am just going to reach out by faith and take it you see with god distance doesn't matter the only thing that is stopping you and i from receiving healing is the fact that you believe something could stop you from receiving healing so the problem isn't with God. The problem is with our thinking. Change your thinking and you will change your life. Change your thinking and you will receive the healing that is available for you. Could we bow our heads this morning? Father, we give you praise. We give you honor. We give you glory. Thank you for your word to our hearts and our hearing this morning, mighty God. Thank you, Lord, that you are the God that heals. You are still healing sick bodies. You are still delivering the demonized. You are still raising the dead. You are still opening blind eyes. You are still unstopping deaf ears, mighty God. Your healing power is available. And I sense the Lord is saying there are some of you here. You may be in need of healing. But what the Lord has showed me is that you have relatives, you have friends, you have loved ones who are infirmed, who are under demonic bondage, whether it is bondage to religion, bondage to, uh, you know, habits. There's, there's some type of bondage that they are in. And God is saying he has not changed. He healed the servant of the centurion from a distance. He healed the son of the nobleman from a distance. He healed the Syrophoenician's daughter from a distance. All because someone came to Jesus. Believing that he could heal. Believing that he could do the impossible. And so this morning I want to open up this altar. You have a family member, you have a friend, you have someone you're concerned about. They may need healing. They are not here. They are at a distance. They need deliverance. Whatever the need is, you can stand in proxy. You can exercise faith on their behalf this morning. Come to the front. We're going to pray for you on their behalf in the mighty name of Jesus. Could we all stand in the presence of the Lord? I am the God that he led thee. I am the Lord, your healer. I sent my word. Come on, let's sing that. And heal your disease. I am the Lord, your healer. Come on, let's take it from the top again. I am the God that he led thee with uplifted hands. I am the Lord, your healer. I sent my word and heal your disease. I am the Lord, your
Let's sing it like we mean it. I am the Lord. I am the Lord. That I am the Lord. Your for Brother Richard is here on behalf of his family so right now we stand in agreement we send a word of healing to the family right now pray that there will be togetherness there will be love there will be unity in the name of Jesus right now mighty God I pray that you will remove the scales from off of their eyes mighty God that you will deliver and set them free from every form of captivity in the mighty name of Jesus you're praying for their deliverance you're praying for their salvation mighty God save them Lord even now in Jesus name in Jesus name hallelujah of the brain that was affected with his stroke we speak healing and restoration to him right now in the name of Jesus in the mighty name of Jesus we lift up the other family member in the hospital in the name of Jesus I send the word of healing she will not need to do that surgery that she will be healed I command her body to be healed and to be restored right now in the mighty name of Jesus we call on Emmanuel right now mighty God mighty God let your spirit fall fresh on Emmanuel Emmanuel what a powerful name God with us let Emmanuel experience an encounter with you Lord give him a fresh encounter in the name of Jesus we break those shackles those yokes, those scales that are upon his eyes, we lift them off of his eyes right now. Help him to see, Lord. Lord, we call for repentance. Repentance for Emmanuel in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, Lord, put your hook in his jaw. Bring him back to faith. Bring him back in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for doing it. In Jesus' name. Father, I thank you that you have not given us the spirit of fear, but of power, of love, of a sound mind. Every spirit of fear, every spirit of fear, I command you, come out! Lose her right now. Every spirit of fear, I terminate your assignment. I terminate your assignment. I replace you with the spirit of love, of power, and a sound mind. 
Bible says perfect love casteth out fear. And so we cast out every spirit of fear and timidity right now. I break every yoke and every chain. Every yoke. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus, Lord, I thank you. And that spirit of fear is leaving right now. In Jesus' name. In the mighty name of Jesus, every spirit of fear, go in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. I sent my word, I'm in your disease, I am the Lord, your Father, we give you praise. I thank you, Lord, for Sister Jenny, who has come on behalf of our sisters. Mighty God, one. Father is recovering from the virus. One is, has to do surgery. Recovering from surgery. One has the virus. One is recovering from surgery. And mighty God, we send your healing power. Every sister right now, wherever they are, Lord, you said that you sent your word and healed. And so right now, we send the word of healing to each sister right now. In the mighty name of Jesus, I speak to their bodies. I speak to their minds. I speak health and wellness and restoration right now. In the name of Jesus, I command all sickness, all disease, all pain, leave their bodies right now. In Jesus' name, in the mighty name of Jesus, we thank you, Lord, for doing it. Hallelujah. So, we have a young lady who wants to accept Jesus Christ as a Savior and Lord. And so we're going to lead her into that prayer of repentance, sister. Sister Genesis, what a wonderful name. Just repeat this after me. In fact, everyone, you can repeat this prayer. Say, Lord Jesus, I am a sinner. I am a sinner. In need of a savior. In need of a savior. Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus. I confess. I confess. And repent. And repent. Of all my sins. Of all my sins. Forgive me. Forgive me. And cleanse me. And cleanse me. From all from all unrighteousness. unrighteousness. I believe. I believe. You died for my sins. You died for my sins. You rose again from the dead. And you rose again from the dead. I now make you. I now make you. My Savior. My Savior. And Lord. And Lord. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Father, we thank you for young Genesis. What a powerful name. What a powerful name. Genesis, the book of beginnings. And Lord, I thank you that today is a new day of beginnings in the life of Genesis. Mighty God, I pray that you will download your spirit upon her in a mighty way. Even as you were with David, the mighty Samus, the mighty warrior. Mighty God, I pray that your spirit will mantle Genesis from this young age. That she will grow in grace, in favor, in stature, in wisdom, in and knowledge, in Lord. understanding, in the fear of Almighty God. That you will use her to be mighty on the earth. That she will bring solutions to the problems that we have in the earth, mighty God. I pray that you will keep her, protect her, preserve her, and cause her to come into that purpose and destiny that you have ordained for her life. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Hallelujah.
Father, thank you for Sister Christine. You send She's come your on word behalf of her children, mighty God. So right now I lift up Dara. You are the in the Lord, name of Jesus, I send the word of healing to Dara right now. You are the Lord, that PCOS you condition, I rebuke you in the mighty name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, I command all roots, all cysts, all conditions to fall off of her body right you now. In the name of Jesus, and healing and restoration. Right now, for Dara, in the name the of Jesus, mighty my God, I pray that you will bring those hormones in check, mighty you God, the in the name of Jesus, every part of her body, Lord, we pray for healing, healing in the body, healing in the soul, healing in her mind, mighty God, in the name of Jesus, and Lord, I pray that the peace of God will mantle Dara even while she's away in the UK, mighty God, you that you will give her your Lord, peace in the name of Jesus. Healer. Lord, we lift up Christian also in you the name of Jesus. I break every ungodly the covenant, everything that was said or done you in the past the Lord, that is not of God. We wash it away with the blood of Jesus. We revoke you we renounce every ungodly covenant right now in the name of Jesus. Lord, I pray you that you will remove the scales from off of his eyes, mighty God. Father, I pray that you will touch him. You give him an encounter Lord. with you. God, give him an encounter. In the night seasons, Lord, you give him an Lord. encounter. Give him a spiritual My encounter. Healer. Allow him to see the risen Savior and Lord you Jesus Christ. Lord, I pray that you will bring him back to the faith. Disease. In the name of Jesus, all of you those ideologies and those ideas that are not of God, we pull down right now. In the you name of Jesus. We say Jesus Christ is Lord over Christian's life. And Lord, I thank you for restoration in his life. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. You sent Amen. your word and healed my disease. You are the Lord, my healer. You are the Lord. You are the Lord. That so father I thank you for your daughter who has come on behalf of her own daughter mandy i lift up mandy right now you send your word we pray that that pregnancy will be a safe one. we pray lord that you will touch mandy in her body in her mind in her emotions we send the word of healing to her body right now we pray against that weight loss in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, Lord, we pray that she will carry that baby to the full term. That baby will be healthy and strong in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for your healing touch upon Mandy's life right now. We commit her into your hands. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. You are the Lord. That he left me, you are the Lord, my healer. You sent your word and healed my disease. Father, you we thank you this morning Lord, for your daughter. She's come healer. on behalf of two men, two important men in her life. You so we lift up David George. David George, we call him my name. We call him into the kingdom of God. We break every yoke and every chain and every obstacle that is keeping him outside of the kingdom of God. Mighty God, I pray that you will give him an encounter with you. Pray for his salvation. We pray, Lord, that you will reel him in. In the name of Jesus, put your hook in his jaw, Lord, and bring him into the kingdom. Lord, we commit him. We commit him into your you hands, into Lord. your care. Lord, my I pray that you would heal him. Heal him. Father, 
from these ideas, these ideologies that is keeping him out of the kingdom. Loose him from these ideas in the name of Jesus. So we commit David into your hands. We also want to lift up David Ellis. David Ellis. Right now we send the word of healing, deliverance. I break every every yoke of the enemy, every habit. Right now we lose him from every addiction to substance abuse right now. Lose him right now in the mighty name of Jesus. I declare that he will lose his appetite for those substances right now. Father, I pray that you will bring him into the kingdom. Mighty God, Father, deliver him from those spirits right now. Every ungodly spirit that has David Ellison bondage, I drive you out in Jesus' name. And I lose David right now in Jesus' name. We are calling David into the kingdom, into the kingdom in the name of Jesus. So, Lord Father, I thank you for restoration. I thank you, Lord, for healing and deliverance for David in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you for Brother Mark. Thank you for your healing touch. We release your healing virtue upon him from the crown of his head to the soles of his feet. Right now, I rebuke all body pains. All body pains. All pains. I command you, leave and never return. In the name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you for doing it, Lord. In Jesus' name. I can feel it so Father, we give you praise and thank you for your daughter, Ashley. She's come on behalf of our family. So Father, we lift up every family member. Right now, we are praying for their salvation. We are praying for their deliverance. Mighty God, I pray that even during this Christmas season, you're going to work on their hearts. You're going to soften their hearts. Mighty God, Father, I pray that you will convict of sin, of righteousness, of coming judgment. Mighty God, give them an encounter with the risen Christ, the Christ of glory. Help them to see their true spiritual condition. Cause them to run into your arms, Lord, even, even from this moment, mighty God. We call them into the kingdom of God. So Lord, Father, we send your word. We send your word to them, Lord. The word of salvation. The word of repentance. The word of deliverance. We loose them from every bondage. From every captivity. And we call them into the kingdom of God. In Jesus' name. Amen. And amen. Open up your heart and you receive. So, Father, we thank you for Daniel and all that you have done, all that you are doing in her life. And Lord, she's come on behalf of her daughter, Celine. So, right now, we send the word of healing and restoration to Celine. Lord, the fact that Celine is here is because you have a plan for her life. Lord, you saw her even before she was formed in the mother's womb. And so, mighty God, I pray that you would cause Selene to grow in grace and favor and strength. Lord, that she will grow up to be a, a daughter in the kingdom. That she will grow up to fulfill her divine purpose. And so we speak to her organs. We speak to her tissues. We speak to her brain. We speak to her body. We speak complete healing and restoration to Celine right now be healed be restored be made well in Jesus name in Jesus name hallelujah oh. so father we give you praise thank you for your daughter 
so right now we release the healing virtue of Jesus into her body right now from the crown of her head to the soles of her feet we pray for healing of the shoulders wherever there is pain and discomfort all pain I command you go in Jesus name receive your healing right now in Jesus name let the weight of your glory rest upon her Lord Father, we lift up the family members, those who are not saved. We are praying for their salvation. Lord, I pray that you will convict each and every one of sin, of righteousness, and of coming judgment. Put your hook in their jaws. Bring them into the kingdom, Lord. We are calling them out of the kingdom of darkness, into the kingdom of light. Open their eyes to see that they are in the kingdom of darkness and they need to come out of the kingdom of darkness and step in to the kingdom of light bring conviction upon them let the spirit of repentance fall upon them in the mighty name of jesus lord we are lifting up sister alicia concerning that promotion and the job we know that promotion does not come from the east or the west but it comes from you mighty god so lord we thank you that she will obtain that promotion your word says delight yourself in the lord and he will give you the desires of your heart we thank you lord that that promotion is hers thank you for supernatural favor and breakthrough in jesus name we declare it done in the mighty name of jesus in the mighty name of jesus as we lift him up in worship and praise, as we magnify his holy name. Father, we thank name. you for Brother Ali. He's come on behalf he of his family. You you Lord, we know there is no distance. I rebuke every attack upon his family. Every attack of the enemy, we stifle, we stymie, we silence every demonic assignment. We break yokes and chains off of the lives of his family, mighty God. We pray, Lord, that you will put your hedge of protection around him, around the family. Lord, we are praying for their complete salvation in the name of Jesus. I Mighty can God, we thank you for breakthroughs so in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. As we Hallelujah. lift them up in Hallelujah. worship and praise. As we magnify his holy name. He will touch you if you only believe. Open up your hearts and you receive. Thank you, Lord, for your son was come on behalf of his family. And so right now, in the mighty name of Jesus, we pray for their salvation. We're calling them into the kingdom of God. Mighty God, Father, I pray that you will touch each member of his family. Lord, you know the needs, you know the concerns. I pray that you will minister to them in the name of Jesus. Lord, I pray that you will cause him to grow in grace and favor and the things of Almighty God. Use him, Lord, as a bridge. Use him as a bridge. And Lord, you're going to use him to bring the family into the kingdom. So Lord, we commit them into your hands, into your care, in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Hearts and you receive and cast aside every doubt and fear. All right. Okay. For the so, Father, we give you praise. Lord is here. So, Lord, we, t- oh, we command the these eyes of the to be made whole, to be made well right now. In I Jesus' name, eyes, I command you to be healed. So to be restored whatsoever the problem is whatsoever the problem is i declare that the eyes are healed they are restored right now lord you see his desire is to grow in the faith it's to become more like you so lord we pray that you will touch him lord from the crown of his head to the sole of his feet 
every form of resistance, every obstacle, we break and destroy right now. Father, I pray that you will give him a, an insatiable desire for the things of God, for the kingdom of God. Ignite your fire in his heart, Lord. Let him be consumed by zeal for the kingdom right now. In Jesus' name, fall fresh upon him, Lord. In I Jesus can name. feel his presence ever so near As we lift him up in worship and so pray So Father, we thank you for Sister Charmaine As All you see the desires of her heart Lord, it's the beginning to employ So mighty God, I thank you for he open doors you Thank you, Lord, that you're opening new doors leave. New doors for employment, Open new doors of breakthroughs, in the mighty name of Jesus, Lord, I pray that you will touch Cast her, touch her, oh mighty God, in her mind, touch her in her body, Lord, even the things that she did not ask for, but you know that she has need of, mighty God, I pray that you will provide, every need will be met, in Jesus' name, I pray, Lord, that you will continue to order her steps. Continue to I order her steps in the mighty name of Jesus. And we thank you, Lord, for those job opportunities that are coming her way in the next season. In, in Jesus' name, and pray. amen and amen. As we magnify his holy name, he will touch you if you only believe. So, Father, thank you for Sister Daya. Lord, you see the desire of her heart, Lord. She's come on behalf of her family. I pray against every conflict, every form of division in the home. Drive out every spirit of division, every spirit of conflict. I pray that there will be forgiveness and healing in the home. Mighty God, we lift up our daughters. Touch, touch them, Lord. Touch them, Father. You know what they need, Lord. You know all that they need. And so, mighty God, I pray that you will provide whatever is needed. So, Lord, we pray for healing, deliverance. We pray for restoration of families. In the name of Jesus, mighty God, I pray that they will develop our, our cords and bonds of love. Open Pray for up spirit your heart of love and, you and healing and togetherness. Lord, they will experience as never before. We commit the entire family into your hands. We pray, Lord, also for Sister Diane's siblings. We lift up each and every one of them. Lord, you minister to them. You know what they need. Lord, we call them all into the kingdom of God. I can feel Do a work in their hearts and lives. So in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. As we lift them up in worship and praise. As we magnify His holy name. Right. So, Father, we lift up mommy and daddy. Break every addiction upon their lives right now. We loose them. Your heart we loose them from that spirit of addiction. Break that yoke of addiction, that bondage in the name of Jesus. We loose them and set them free. We call them into the kingdom of God right now. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. And Lord, I pray that you will touch your daughter. And the spirit of the Lord will rest upon her. That she's going to grow up to be a mighty warrior in your kingdom, Lord. That you will use her, Lord, powerfully in the supernatural ministry. We commit her into your hands, Lord, even at this young age. Fill her with your Holy Spirit, Lord. Tell her, Lord, in the name of Jesus, even from this moment. She will touch you if you only believe. Open up your hearts and you receive. Cast us so Father, we lift up Peter every right now. Doubt and fear. Lord, you see and know everything about Peter. For the we call him by name. The Lord Peter is the rock. Lord, I pray that you will bring stability to his life. Mighty Lord God, I pray that you will deliver him from that 
nervous attitude, that, 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 that waywardness, Lord, that instability. Deliver him right now in the name of Jesus. Make him stable, make him strong. Bring a strength and a stability to him in the mighty name of Jesus. Deliver him from every yoke of bondage right now in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Open up your heart and you receive. What's the name? Cast aside so mighty God, we lift up Anika right now. I send the word of healing and restoration to Anika. Be healed right now from the crown of your head, Anika, to the soles of your feet right now. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, it is done. I can feel his presence ever so near As we lift him up in worship and pray As we magnify his holy name He will touch you so if Father, you we give only you praise. believe Thank you for your daughter, Sister Karen she wants to be set free from every spirit of fear. Spirit of fear, spirit of fear, you do not belong. And right now, in the name of Jesus, every spirit of fear, come out and loose her right now. Loose her. I terminate your assignment right now. You have to go in the mighty name of Jesus. Every spirit of fear, I uproot you and I drive you out in the name of Jesus. I call forth a spirit of courage, a spirit of boldness, a spirit of, 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 of strength right now into Sister Karen. Mighty God, I pray that she will sense your presence. She will sense your presence. Mighty God, and thank you, Father, for what you're going to do in her life. Lord, we pray that you will cause your spirit to permeate that place, that property where she is right now. Let your presence take a permanent abode in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. The Lord is here. I can feel His presence ever so near. As we lift, so Father, we lift up Jillian. And pray. Jillian, Lord, As you see and know everything about Jillian. Every Will spirit that is working behind the scenes believe. in Jillian's sickness, I Open rebuke you. I drive you out of, your, of Jillian's body right now. I command Got Jillian to be healed, to be restored, to be made well in the name of Jesus. Jillian, receive Lord your healing right now. In Jesus' oh, name, you are loose from every spirit of infirmity, from every spirit, from every unclean spirit. You are loose and set free right now. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. As we lift them up and worship and pray. As we magnify His holy name. He will touch you if you only believe. Open up your heart. So, Father, we thank you for Sister Yasmin. She's come on behalf of her nieces. One is blind. One is autistic. And Lord, we know that when you walk the earth, you open blind eyes. So, right now, I command those eyes. To be open in Jesus name I speak to the eyes I speak to every part of the eye that is not functioning I command you to be restored to be healed I call for 2020 vision right now in the name of Jesus the niece who is autistic Lord you know what is causing that problem Lord I pray that you will touch the brain right now I speak to the brain the brain, that part of the brain that is not functioning as it ought to function. I speak life into the brain. 
I speak healing and restoration and I command all of these symptoms of autism to go right now in Jesus name in Jesus name it is done in Jesus name hallelujah Spirit of the Lord is here. I can feel His presence ever so near. As we lift Him up in worship, Hallelujah, Father, we thank You for this As mighty man of God that You raised up from our midst. Name. Thank you, Lord, for what you're doing he in his life. He's come on behalf of his family be and his friends. And Lord, you see and know up your all that is needed. Lord, you are more than able. You are sufficient to meet every need. And so we lift up the family members, whatever is needed. We pray, Lord, that you will meet their need. We pray that there will be restoration, revival, healing. Breakthroughs, you pray for his friends, Lord. If his friends, they are not in a relationship with you. We pray, Lord, that you will call them into the kingdom. Mighty God, I pray that you will convict of sin, of righteousness, and of coming judgment. Lord, I pray that they will commit their lives to you before it is too late, mighty God. So, Father, we just commit them into your hands. In he Jesus' will touch name. You if you In Jesus' name. Believe. Amen. Open up Amen. your hearts and you receive. Right. Father, we give Just you praise. We lift up Brother Joseph. This back problem right now. In the name of, the Jesus. of Jesus. All pain. Of the Lord All pain. I command you. Leave. It's back right now. I speak to the muscles. I speak to the spine. I speak to the ligaments. I can feel I command the muscles to loosen up right now. In the name of Jesus. All pain. Go. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. I command the back to be healed. I command the spine to be healed. I command the joints, the nerves to be healed right now in Jesus' name. In the mighty name of Jesus. Brother Joe, do something you couldn't do. We can bend down. We can do everything. All right. So, Father, we thank you for complete healing and restoration. Brother Joseph, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Bless God. Bless God. God is indeed a good God. Hallelujah. We praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Sister Karen.